question. I think we should get started, probably. Um, so yeah. I'm the lucky one to present you the next chapter about expression. Uh, like I said, we will hear a lot, which we already heard of from Mariella. So it will be yeah, a lot of the same, but also new stuff. Um, actually, expression, and we will talk about it. Evil, evil is evil. So especially in, in, in JavaScript, or if you do homepage stuff, the whole evaluation thing of expressions are really uh, dangerous. Um, I thought of a small example, so we can hack Google a little bit, I would say. Um, if we, so I, I just want to demonstrate um, why either can be either. Um, I will modify a little bit the Google homepage. So that lucky button now here, so in German of good luck, uh, will now evaluate um, user input. So that means I can now write um, JavaScript, ah, damn, I have to do it again, sorry. I can write JavaScript code and it will be evaluated straight away. Um, uh -huh. One try more, I did the wrong button. It's not that easy with the Google homepage because they have let lots of safety precursions. Okay, last try is of the best one. So as you see here, I get a pop up. I hope you can see it. And what that means is now in the Google search, the, the string um, get passed and I can um, more or less hack, of course, only on the user side, the code. And for example, I, I can, the whole background, I can change the image, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, that's not bad. It's just evaluating now on click some JavaScript code. But we all know that uh, SQL injections are real. So if you have something with evil on your, on your server side and the user somehow knows a little bit of your structure, you, can, you could grab more or less with some SQL injection uh, passwords from your member database, et cetera, et cetera. So, that's a stupid example, but I wanted to show you simply that either if you uh, pass strings, user input could uh, cause problems. And that I wanted to demonstrate a little bit with this example. Um, okay, I talked a lot, a lot about it. So why do we even we need either or either? Uh, let's say like an, like an um, function, we have an expression and we know that expression and we want to use it further down our analysis or further down on a function. So we could define it. So we want this simple expression. If we, if we run it, it won't work because A and also B is not defined. So to work around this, uh, we need to capture it. That's one of the dictionary inputs that Brad mentioned. So capture of that's that's a special name for capturing ex expression. And I also write here expression because the, the output of Arlang expression or a quote or a substitute in base will give you an expression. What that means, it won't be executed straight away. So we get the expression as output and we can evaluate the expression. And that's where the evil part comes in. So now I can define A and B with one, uh, evaluate the expression, and in our expression, I, I multi, uh, make an addition of A plus B and uh, shift it into the result object. So if I evaluate that expression, 
I now have a result object in my environment. And if I output that uh, result, I get two because one AMD is one. Okay. Um, Hannes, uh, yeah. Yeah. Can, can you go back a bit? The previous. Okay. So um, I'm just confused like, um, why do we need to use the eval to evaluate if we can just throw by the value for the variables? Not quite getting you. Okay. So, I mean, like now, what is the essence of capturing the expressions? Why do we need, um, I mean, I just want, why do we need to capture the expressions? Because like, if you want to use the content of um, expression, we use it right away without capturing expressions. Yeah, but it could be that you define it already because you know you want to use it or in mm -hmm. another context and want to reuse it or also edit it. I mean, okay. the, the, the whole, um, how is it called? the package which does the pipe symbol and everything. It, it use all, all what you input in, when you pipe, select, filter, et cetera, et cetera. It all caps, that's all what you input there are actually expressions. And in the background, the package evaluates these expressions. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So, so I mean, I, I, I personally never had the use for directly capture an expression, except for a case like you ask with uh, throwing symbols into a function or so, and there you need to capture it. So if you remember you have, when you, when you want uh, to draw in a string in the function and it should be a symbol in the, in the function, you have to change it into a symbol and then uh, with, with the double bang bang, uh, break it up so you can use it in your um, workflow or in your function and more or less the same applies here and that's that's a, a stupid example and no one would use it like this because it makes no sense like you said because i can also write this stuff after yeah. i declared yes yeah and yeah. you are completely right okay yeah okay some someone uh notes on what, what everything is called because it's all not that simple. So expression and end quoting. So end quote, we talk later a little bit about it, uh, prevents evaluation. And that's also called diffusing or quoting. So capturing, diffusing, quoting are not strictly the same, but also more or less the same. Uh, end quote with the an, in, in front of is, I think hardly calls it enriched. That's, that's a special case where, where you catch a, a argument supplied by the user inside the function. So it also has a little bit more safety uh, precautions because of evil can be evil. So, and also uh, because of the environment, but we will see later in an example. Uh, in base, the same is quote and substitute. So you can also work with the base ones. Uh, evil deity and evil are also, um, so evil deity is also from Arlang and evil is the base equivalent and that's for evaluation. So, so this is a quote for parsing. So the proce process by which a computer language takes a string and constructs an expression is called parsing and is governed by a set of rules known as grammar. So, Actually, that the example here is not exactly passing because we are not uh, drawing in a string, we are drawing in an expression. We will say we will see later that passing is a little bit different. The example I made with Google is passing a string to a function, and that's the really dangerous stuff. Um, the grammar, though is always there. And because there are a set of uh, rules, we can generate the trees and everything. And, and the code knows what, what to do with the stuff. But we will see also in some examples. Quotia, I one example because I really like it. It's, it's not, um, we will talk in the, I think in the next chapter a little bit more about it. Uh, Quotias are quoted expressions 
that includes a reference to the context that was created. So what does that mean? I create a simple uh, function here, multiply my expression by 10. It takes an expression. I need to capture it with n quote, with the enrich quote, because it's a user supplied inside the function, otherwise it won't work. Then I define a local 10, so my multiplier. And here in the quotient with quo, I explode the previous defined expression that the tree shifts into the quotient and multiply it by local 10. If I run this with a plus b and run quotient, I get back a quotient. So I get this, that out, output back with an environment. So the quotient by itself also takes environments. And you can't see here the color. So uh, I simply want the code. So now you see, I make it a little bit bigger. In a terminal, you see all of the also the color given. So you see the environment and the and the memory space from the environment here. That's actually the environment from the function. And you see the local then and the environment has the same color. So that means they are looking. So local then is defined in this environment, or it looks in this environment. A and B has a different color, so it looks in the global environment. Uh, and if I I probably cannot run this because I did not define A and B. Yeah, okay. So I define A and B. And I can run it and I get again one plus one, which is evaluated here, multiplied by local 10. And it, it does not try to search for local 10 in the global environment. It searches inside uh, the function environment because the quotient takes environments. And either won't work here because it will return also a quotient because you need to use here evil data because evil data also works with environments and data masking, which we will see in the next chapter with quasi quotation, what that means in detail. Yeah. Okay, uh, in Mariella talked about the, the tree structure. He has short review. So with the lobster S package, we, we can see a tree uh, and how the expression is built. And how this expression is built, that's the grammar. And the grammar helps us to know what will be evaluated first, et cetera, et cetera. You could also use the RStudio tree viewer which I really like actually, especially if you have um, nested functions. So here's for the simple one and um, let's just um, do I have somewhere R Studio open? Probably not. Ah, okay, right, I shift here. So I, I can, um, extend this example with a second function. And in the tree view, you see now it has nested um, the, the nested functions. So the, the RStudio viewer of, of these expressions is really good uh, if you have a deep nested uh, expression. So you can really dig in. It gives you also uh, what it is, yeah. Okay, so this RDA can be used to see nested JSON files. Uh, nested expressions. JSON, JSON, JSON files, um, because it's like a list inside list, 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 and I was like having a problem, but I think this one. Oh, uh, yeah. To, you, you know what I mean? Um, nested JSON files, you see them yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like the same viewer for both, but it's using it for the, the view AST in this case, which is oh, a okay. thing. Okay. I mean, AST okay. is just another named list, so it's just not okay. another dictionary. So, ah, uh, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Because I mean, the other time I was looking for how to view nested JSONs. Oh uh, yeah. So in 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 VS Code, it does not work actually. It gives me the expression.
but yeah, uh, so it's the viewer is a little bit better, just my case, or I, I like it to inspect stuff. <clears throat> is view strictly an R Studio thing? Yeah, Evo? I guess. No, no, or uh, I mean, you have also a viewer in, in voice code. I don't actually know what will happen if. Uh, Oh yeah, you you need you need um, at least an interface. So I don't know how I would connect the interface to the uh, console, but you need some kind of interface. What about VS Code? Yeah, VS Code it works. If you if you have uh, so if I if I write this, uh, I get something like this, and that's and that's really good because when I have a um, uh, a bigger one, right? not all. Uh, what's it? Yep. Okay, it's a big data frame. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Okay, 500 was too much, big 50. Okay, uh, it, it looks a bit, little bit bad here, but it uses like a data table, so you can also sort here and search. But of course, it's limiting on your performance. So if it's really big, it's, but I, I think it works really good in our, uh, in forest code also. So too much opened. Okay, okay, next up. Uh, yeah, the ask syntax or the structure, if you look at that, it also helps you to understand um, understand how something gets evaluated. So if you see something like here, you know that I gets evaluated first, then H, then G, then F. And that's because evaluate, evaluation happens from deepest to shallowest, in this case. Um, but it's not good indeed because of lazy evaluation. Uh, also, he mentions why this all that stuff is called abstract syntax is because when you're writing here a comment or some spaces, unnecess unnecessary spaces, it will get removed. So only the abstract pure uh, function will be uh, expression will be kept. Um, okay, here an inside out example because. Actually, uh, we know that that stuff works. So we can use some outside, then inside the sum, then the mean, and other things. That's that works in R, but not in every language because the whole thing is a tree structure, and the grammar in R is that it gets from the deepest, uh, the deepest get first evaluated, and then it goes to the outside. So this sum will be evaluated last. Another thing is that most operators are left associative. <clears throat> so what that means is that if we write uh, this um, expression with one plus two plus three, actually behind the scenes, it will, it will first evaluate one plus two and then plus three. In the tree, we also see it. And most operators are left associative and there's a whole list but for example, the exponentiation is right associative. So there first right gets evaluated and then right. This, this case, of course, only applies if you have uh, the same operation happening. And with this plus symbol, it actually doesn't matter which get evaluated first. Um, a, a, Good quick example here would be also, uh, we all, all know uh, Chi Chi plot. So if you do with uh, point, okay, we all know that Chi Chi plot, this element will be first evaluated. And this then Chi Chi point, and when I do Chi line, 
and now I need um, and when I uh, right color is black. When I look now into the plot, we all know that the point, the black point is underneath the line because it will be first um, first evaluated because there's a plus symbol and it begins here, then here, then here. And that's, we, we always write it or I write it underneath, but if you write it uh, like this side by side, you know, it gets, is left associative so it gets from left, left, left. Just a side note. <clears throat> okay, for the infix chords, that's that was interesting. Uh, it does not matter how you write it, the expression will always look like this. So if you write the expression like we are used to it, it will uh, the expression will also look like this. But if you write the expression like it would be functions, which we know does work because infix are simply functions, the expression will also look like this if you print it. I think that's really cool. Uh, and if you look at the tree, it will look again like the function because we know that the assignment here is, is uh, the core, the multiplier here is a core, and that's the object. Um. Yeah. Um, so the infinix, I mean, we that we just write, we don't care about it, right? Um, is there anywhere where, that we care to write our expression in infix format? Uh, I, I would say no. I, I would al always write like yeah. this because it fits in my head better. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, but but that's also a, a R thing. So not every every language supports that stuff. So you don't have in every language a, a multiplier or a plus. So I I cannot write that, for example, in JavaScript because there is no multiplier or is there? I don't know actually. But yeah, you cannot write it like this because infix is something special from R actually, or from some languages. So in other languages, you would write something like multiply and then your vector of numbers or something like this. So I, I, I talked about it a little bit and also in the last time. So expression has their own data types, more or less the basic data type are constants. And what makes this special is that they're inside the expression the same as outside of the expression. So an expression of one gives you an expression of one, but it's actually the same as one. So the double keeps the double, it's, it's the same. Symbols we talked about, it represents the name of an object. So it, if you test it against name, it's also true. And we also did look at it that expression is the same as of X is the same when you create a symbol of the string X. So they will also uh, be equal. But if, if I look at expression of X and try uh, to compare it to the object X, it's not the same because the expression is the name and the symbol and it's not the object by itself. You can also do the whole thing reverse with rlang a string. So you can make out of an expression a string again, which is probably cool to use. Um, the last thing is calls that, that what we define as fun functions and we know that function are calls and they, they are, so they represent the captured function call and their type of list and bare list to be precise, uh, hardly talks in, I think in the last uh, part of the chapter, chapter, he talks about the differences, but it, it doesn't matter for us. We, Marella also talked about it, that we can manipulate expression 
that's probably helpful when you're creating some packages which rely on that stuff. So you can access single arguments out of the expression, but also edit uh, single uh, parts of the expression because they behave like a list. For constructing, we, we always constructed um, the expression with, uh, yeah, with the expression function, but uh, maybe a little bit more useful is to use like call do, where you can define each part. So the first part is, for example, the call. It can, it can be uh, given as string or as expression and constants, et cetera, et cetera. And here define a mean function, for example. So the core will give me an expression. Uh, Hartley uh, also talks about that the core uh, is a little bit clunky, but in the chapter 19, we will learn a better uh, method to do that stuff. But that's the core thing is probably also helpful to create really clean uh, expressions without um, the expression syntax. So uh, in the Google example, and like I said, with the, with the string, passing and evaluation is where uh, lots of problems in security do happen. Uh, of course, passing is, is also defined for multiple things. Like I can also, or the computer does always pass your code into his language. There are parser for XML, there are parser for HTML. There was where you give them HTML or the XML to give you some other output based on some rules that's all called parsing. And in this case, we want to pass a string which should be evaluated. So for example, if I define X1 with two plus 10 and just throw that into either, it will give me out the string. So it won't work like this. I cannot evaluate a string straight away. So, um, but I can use uh, something like pass expression from Ardlang. And if I throw in the string here, the whole output here is an expression again, and which I can evaluate. In base, there's a pass function where you have to use the text argument because actually it awaits a file. Uh, yeah, that's a special case. And there are also some other use differences in it. But more or less, they are the same. And if I evaluate uh, P1, which I define here, and P2, which I define here, they are, the output is the same. And the output will be 12, which I did not write here. Of course, you can also debase. So if you have an expression, you can use expression text and you get a string text. And this does actually happen when you print the expressions automatically. So if I print Z in the background, what, what is happening is it, it will generate a string out of your expression. So that, that was that chapter. And I'm open for questions. I did not read the chat, so sorry. Okay, I, I, I could not answer Brad, your question any better. I, I'm also no native speaker in English, so it's a little bit hard for me. What's the fine tuning between the words? Yeah, there's a lot of, in, in all these chapters, there's a lot of kind of like meaning buried in the words and it's just hard to parse them all out, remember what means what. Do you guys ever use this stuff in your, you know, coding whatever? Uh, like I said, the, the symbol 
exploding stuff and and building um, selecting selecting uh, columns in a function based on your input. That's basically all evaluation and classification. And yeah, I, I use that a lot. Actually. Yeah, I think I've uh, worked with express expra function and the eval function when I was doing a. I was trying like a bunch of ex, uh, equations, uh, grammatical evil. I think that's a package, and uh, yeah, I couldn't wrap my head around back then, but I kind of understand why why it worked back then. Now, yeah, I think I've done the same thing, like for doing math notation, um, and I I never really understood what I was doing. I just was like, okay, I'll follow this recipe, and this will <laughs> hopefully work. And I I feel like a lot of the stuff, like I you know, I don't necessarily do the the um, developer level stuff with it, but knowing how it works will, you know, the next time I run into that, I'll feel like, like, okay, I understand what's happening here. Therefore, when this fails horribly, I, I have a, I have a, you know, tools for figuring out what's going on. Whereas before I just be like, I'll just try putting in something different here. Yeah. So. Yeah. I guess that kind of goes back to your question, Brett, on grammar versus syntax. Yeah, I feel like a lot of this stuff too, it's like, you know, I'm kind of wishing I had a, a little bit of a CS background. Um, I can't remember what book it was. There's something I started reading a while ago. Um, but it was a uh, um, programming book that's that rather than, you know, starting the way most do with starting in on, you know, here's how you can write stuff. It started off with like, okay, this is what syntax is. This is what semantics is, and this is what whatever the third one is. Um, and I, you know, I feel like that's that's kind of helpful here. And I, you know, yeah. I'm trying to remember what that book is. It's a pretty common one. I mean, I, I would I would say no grammar and syntax is not the same. For, for me, syntax is what I as user need to write. So the, the language specific, um, or a, ha, how I would say. Okay, Sy syntax is what I as user need to write and grammar is uh, what, what the computer uh, breaks it down more or less. Be because um, here he also talks in the asked as, as um, what, what's it? Ah, for forgot it. That he, he removes everything like like comments and and um, spaces which are not needed, but for the syntax, it's also part of the syntax, and the syntax does work. So if I write a comment, for me it's part to, to write a comment. It's also a syntax kind of. I, I mean, I, yeah. Uh, the, the book I was thinking of is uh, um, How to Think Like a Computer Scientist. Uh, I think the original one was for C, but there's one for Python now. And in the first chapter, they go through and they say, okay, th these are the types of errors you run into. And it's a syntax error versus a semantic error and versus a runtime error. That's what I was thinking of in that last bit. Oh, okay. I'll post a link to it. No, and it's probably a little bit hard to evaluate a runtime error in R because it's not uh, compiled. So it's also right. a little bit different. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's compiled, but it's, yeah, I don't know what's the special meaning. Well, yeah, I guess, uh, well, in, in R, I guess, uh, um, I don't know what you call that part of R Studio, the, the, the linter, the thing that comes up with the little errors along the side, is picking up syntax errors, but it can't necessarily pick up, you know, things that will cause an error when you run the program, like if some variable is yeah. not the right type or something like that. Ah, oh, next week it is me. Oh, I should let you on to take it. <laughs> Um, I'll do it if you want me to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
You want to go? Uh, if you want me to, I, I can prepare. Yeah, because um, this week I think I will be, um, I can do the last one um, translating because I learned um, what her name, she will do the next after one, after the next. So I will do one after her. Yeah, I think Layla signed up for. Yeah, yeah because, I, okay. because I see she put like maybe John, <laughs> maybe something like that. So if you are free, you can take up the next slot um, and I will do one after her. I can put my name. Was she questionable for both 19 and 20? No, no, no. She would do one. Okay, okay. I will yeah. see what happens in the chat. Are you okay to do the next one? I thought it was the evaluation that she couldn't do. Okay. Not next week. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I'll bring it up in the Slack group. All right. Um, and so... Brad, Brad is really into performance, it seems. <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, it's not something I actually need to do in any of my code. It's just, you know, it's kind of fun to play around with that stuff. I was actually thinking about doing the uh, the evaluation chapter, but... Um... Um... So all this meta programming, where do we use it um, in the future? Because like um, now in the tidyverse world, I have not, I mean, been using it. Um, so where do you use apply it, this meta programming? Writing packages, maybe. Yeah, and like I said, classification is actually meta programming. Sorry. Um, Hannes, what did you so, say? So something like quasi quotation. So that's ah, okay. actu actually meta programming. Like, I don't know where I have an example. Here, here I create a labeler for for a plot of mine. Uh, and, and a simple thing like the, the column. The column is a, a string. And I, I defuse the string with end symbols. So I create a symbol out of it. And this symbol, I can I can reference inside the summarize. Mm. And something yeah. like this is actually meta programming. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. So like essentially, anytime you're writing a tidyverse friendly function, you'll need to you should be using this right because you're you know, oh, yeah. if you're if you're writing something that's tidyverse friendly, you want it to take a um, a tibble is the first argument, or the data is the first argument, and then what to operate on is the other arguments. And unless you want to, you know, give the what to operate on as the dollar notation or bracket notation, you need to use the tidy evaluation. Yeah. And I feel like that's like the second tier of doing that. The first tier is just using tidyverse functions in your own functions, and you need to, you know, quote end quote for that. Yeah. And then writing Absolutely. tidyverse functions. And, and the whole de deployer package or how you call that stuff, uh, actually, I, I think hardly mention it. It's, it's all um, evaluation. So that, that I, I hate that top bar. <laughs> That's exactly a top bar between my... So if you want... Eval, if you feed in like a group by year, that year would be evaluated. Again, yeah, yeah, but because when when I do something like this, yeah, 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 that that's actually in the background. Deployer will evaluate this. Ah, okay. Uh, at least I, I think that how it works because you can use Deployer uh, mm. with with a SQL database, more or less. I think. Okay. And if you write this. It will, it will be something like select uh, species from iris. Yeah. That, that, so Deployer will translate your code into some sort of uh, SQL syntax, but as this is no SQL, uh, it will evaluate. Or I don't know exactly how it works. It's, of course, it's a really awesome package and they have a lot of thought in it. But all that stuff in the background is evaluation of your input. And that's all working with data masking because 
here it knows that it should use the iris uh, data uh, iris data set and not look for species somewhere in your environment because mm -hmm. where, where where does it know that species belongs to iris because you, you all know when you when you write pure um, yeah pure r you have to call it like this and you not cannot call like this because it won't work because it does not know that this belongs in here and and that's that's something what's called data masking that's why um you can write something like this i don't know if if you have experienced something like this now it it, it probably uh species it don't work because now it looks species in the environment oh and not yes. anymore because because when I have like, uh, let's say you have something like this, uh, what are the species in unique iris species? Let's say I define something like this. Okay. Now I want to um, filter species and it should be species. That won't work. It so works, it, but yeah. it doesn't do what you're asking it to. Yeah, but you could do something like uh, ah, no. and, and now it, it works. Yeah, we're we're getting ahead of ourselves. But what is um, so? Does the uh, scoping work the same way that function scoping does? Like, so for instance, if uh, if Iris didn't have species in it, then would would the filter know to look in the in the global environment so like so uh friends like yeah yeah do something like that and then change yeah. your change species up above to klaus yeah yeah okay so it so it is scoped like uh like function, function scoping yeah i mean it makes sense yeah kind of but it also even when i would do this it's probably <sighs> It probably looks good if you're writing like this. It, it makes the it makes your meaning clear. Yeah, because no one knows that this stuff now should be uh, in the environment and is not a column because it could be a data column. And I think it's data actually. Yeah, so data is what's happening first, and that's your data masking, 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 masking. Is it pronounced correctly? Masking? I don't know. Big both Masking like this. <laughs> uh, just, uh, just dot by itself is a synonym for, I guess it's not a synonym for data. It's a synonym mm, for whatever's passed. Yeah. The, oh, it, it does work. You are correct. Oh, but I think that's because of uh, um, McGritter, not because of dplyr that that works. Oh, uh, yeah. Because dot in this oh. case is everything in iOS. Yeah. So actually, I I'm unsure. Oh, let let's wait because I think dot would be wrong. If you, uh, if you edit. Adrian posted one the other day. Do you guys remember that? Meaning of no. dots. Oh wait, I think when you write something like this. Um, um, uh, how, how, so, something like I think when you mutate multiple stuff because you know you can now reference to test more or less, then I think the dot doesn't work anymore because um, it's not defined. No, it does work. Okay. Oh, interesting. That's actually surprising that it works because you would think that if dot is a synonym for what's being yeah. passed by the um, by the pipe operator, then it shouldn't work. Yeah. Does it really work? I'm confused. Yeah, so oh. maybe dot is part of dplyr, not part of Ritter. No, it, it doesn't actually create the column. Nothing happens. <laughs> Should I write something wrong? 
So what happened? Because it doesn't report any error. I mean. Huh. Huh. So now, now I get it. Like this, I don't get it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That, that makes sense. So, um, well, it sort of makes sense. Uh, for me, it doesn't make sense. I, I know, I know it's problematic because I know that dot, I had some problems with dot, dot does not reference to what you think it should reference. Wait, but so I, if you run the code like it is now, then is, I that, don't is see. that the output down below? Okay, that's, that's what, so, so that essentially different. you'd kind of expect dot dollar test to be NA. So you're setting the variable test to equal NA. But is it I, NA or does it just not show up? But I could just well, the, write the value some... of dot dollar test is NA because it's not in the it's not in the yeah. data that's passed. Yeah, it's not it's not in here in the first data. Yeah, it, I mean it's kind of a wait. So now we're getting and okay now. No, 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 that's that's uh, from previous. <laughs> Yeah, you'd, you'd kind of, you'd rather it throw an error. You'd rather it throw a warning that's that you'll know, probably- Yeah, warning because says, I can write, you can write this and then it works. Oh no. <laughs> okay, so, okay. So dot is the, is really is what's passed through the pipe. Yeah. And so. dot data is the current representation of data within the dplyr call. It's the same thing as like, yeah. Is that because I'm invisible? It returns itself. I don't know how this stuff works. That's the that's the other half of it. <laughs> but yeah, actually, dot you should really only use when you want to reference everything. Yeah, I think I think mutate is mutate is creating dot data, whereas the the pipe is creating dot. The dot. So yeah, because you the can... pipe has no concept of what you're doing in the mutate, no. whereas mutate knows that you're, you've already changed the test variable to equal um, dot data dollar species, so that it's available when you, you know, do dot data dollar test. Yeah. But no, because okay, so that's weird, thought... but makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, I know that data and um, and these two are really helpful when you're writing stuff like this. So, Anas, here's a question for you. As somebody yeah. who's programmed in a, in a bunch of different languages, does this, do these kind of, I don't know whether it goes back to whether it's semantics or syntax, does this bother you compared to other language or do you like it? Uh, what, what in Spanish? <laughs> well, what? Meaning, meaning things like, uh, all of this kind of weird stuff that gets passed around that's not immediately like syntactically coherent or obvious. I mean, that's more or less it, happening a, in, 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 in many packages or in many languages. Yeah. Um, a, a little bit what, what I already mentioned, we said, or yeah, dataverse is nice and everything, but actually we are learning here, not uh, we are learning dataverse. And that what I see a little bit problematic. Also, also with the pipe. I mean, the piping gets crazy. If I, I, I also over abuse it, and it makes sense. But uh, I mean, it, if if it gets really long, it you shouldn't do it. It's 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 so. If if you're writing any test codes or if you need to debug anything, it's it's yeah. But, yeah, the longer your chain gets, the harder it is. Yeah. To but you can also also in in um in JavaScript you would write something like this. So people also do chaining like this. So it's it's, uh, not, it's, okay. it's not it's not uncommon to do piping because okay. it makes it makes a lot of sense. Or if you know uh the, the piping in, in, in bash, but is also often they do a grabx. And then something, and then you you pipe you pipe it in oh, the yeah. file. Mm -hmm. This is this, this yeah. So it's just there, and you just need to think about it. <clears throat> what what I maybe sometimes would like is that something like this is stricter, 
And I don't like the automatically um, searching in a higher environment. That's 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 because I think you all had it once. Your function did work once, and then you closed the program, run it again. It didn't work anymore. Till you realized that one object you never defined anymore, or mm -hmm. you didn't redefine it. And that's what I really don't like. So it's not strict enough. In JavaScript, that's called strict. Um, so you write before everything, you write strict. And then everything in here will be only in here. There's, there's no looking outside, more or less. <laughs> OK, and that's the environment. Pardon? I said, that's the environment. The yeah, environment. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I don't like that something like, like more or less. Um, oh, I do that all the time. <laughs> that this this works. So if I now write H, oh, H. Yeah, it's it, in okay. in most languages you could use strict scoping to make sure that it's yeah. only able to use what's in the function. So you'd catch an error when you're writing the code rather than you know down the line. But I, I'm also no programmer, so I'm, I, I just, you know, I never learned it from the, I just learned by doing it. So I, I never had, I didn't never learn what schematics or syntax or something like this. It's like, so Thank I don't you. know if I should hate it or not. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the H function, sorry, uh, if you were to explicitly define the environment within the yeah. function, what would you put in front of class? Close. I think that does not Is work. Is it env? That, that should I, work, I, right? That does not work. That will work, right? Does it work? Oh, OK. I, I'm. Oh, because it's the function environment, not the global environment. Mm -hmm. Does that really work? I don't know. Well, yeah, the, like, the question is, where does that yeah. end from, from, come from? Is it an R thing? Or is Works. No. No. no, no. Okay, so that's a tiny verse thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm, well, I mean, it tells us it's some data ever. Okay. It's only inside data mask functions. And okay. data mask functions are um, order due date stuff, et cetera, et cetera. So it comes from Arling, but it's only in that. That's where I, I think the next chapter, that's where the quotation comes. Because in the quotation, um, you can set, uh, where you can set, somewhere you can set an URL uh, title. Yeah, in evil deity, you can set a data mask. So you can set here an environment uh, which will evaluate the expression or as data masks. And, and I think that's, that's how the whole uh, duplier works. So the data is your, is your deeper. And everything inside your mutate and filter and select will be an expression which will first look inside your uh, data mask. And it also says your objects in data have a prior priority over those in environment. So I think the, the whole uh, deployer thing is inside something like this. So in evil deity, I don't know exactly how it works. And I doubt it would be good to know, but I don't know how you can set a function to use to never look outside. <clears throat> Maybe if you capture it in, in, if you create the function inside an environment, that, that would be, a, I already forgot everything.
No. I, I forgot how you create an environment. Yeah. Okay. I don't know it anymore. <laughs> but I, you could create an environment uh, and defining the function inside the environment. Uh, HO. And now HO would not work. You and dollar h o would give me zero okay uh oh no wait let's say we say it like this now if even inside the environment it looks up i think that that's what we learned because also with the packages it 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 looks to all environments till to the last one to the base I think we had it in one chapter, how the whole environment looking up works. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Mariella, you were so quiet today. Any questions? Uh, did you sleep? Right? You know, I was just following the experimentation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just just playing around with yeah. no, and we don't know what we are doing. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love just, the live coding. I was just looking. There is this uh, sheet uh, sheet 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 uh, of uh, Arlang, I think, um, which has I think something on on the on the quotations and the. Use a point data, maybe I will send it around um, because maybe it, it is helpful <laughs> later on. Oh, yeah, that's it. Oh, that's so helpful. Okay. Damn, that's a good point. Thank you very much. Oh yeah, this is great. This is like the uh, dictionary we were talking about last week. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so simple. <laughs> I think all the Teddy bus, they also have these cheat sheets, right? Um, yeah, but I, I sell them. I, I use it often for cheat sheet games, but yeah. Oh, see them with <laughs> vocabulary and stuff. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, Mariela. This yeah, thank ideas. you very much. Yeah, here, here it also says like many diverse functions are quoting functions, filter, select, mutate, summarize. And it also gives you some example, like how, like uh, Shambu you ask how to use it. They also said like, hey, just use a data mean, you can use it like this. Mm -hmm. 